<laughs> What's the order? Todd? Yeah. Todd, oh, nice. Good. Awesome. He's, he's third, That's big. Third That's ten. awesome. It's a big moment. Backup QB <laughs> type opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, Todd Archer of the ESPN. Really? Uh, Thank you. Uh, your third down numbers. How much of a role are you guys on here? And, and does from where you started with it, beginning of the season to now, when do, do you put the change in? Yeah, certainly there was a moment uh, where it was a very big hurdle uh, for us, you know, early in the year, and so uh, for our guys to kind of find their groove, and I think. Uh, you know, certainly a number of players have stepped up and made, made tremendous plays, and I think a lot of it goes back to first and second down. I think we always like to emphasize that. that um, you know, if you're living in third and long, it's going to be challenging for you, so your numbers are probably going to indicate that. But, um, you know, when you're living in short yardage, third and two to threes, four to fives, and you can manage those, and the odds would, you know, tailor a little bit more towards the offense there. And once you get to that six and above, obviously the, the defense is going to have the favors there. The odds there, and so uh, you know, certainly we've lived in more manageable situations, and our guys have made tremendous plays. There's no simple answer to this; it's complex. But why was the run game altering the way it did on Thursday night? Yeah, uh, number one, I think uh, those guys are worthy of getting credit for uh, that defensive philosophy and their staff. Uh, they do a tremendous job against the run, and uh, you can look; you don't see a whole lot of big running production games against the uh, Tennessee Titans for a number of years now, and so. Uh, they've done a tremendous job with it. Uh, on our end, obviously, we didn't get the efficiency that we wanted. Um, you know, ultimately, uh, some big plays in there. That, that at some point, you need to break a few. You need to get a few big, big opportunities, and those uh, shift the run game. And so, uh, for us, you know, the last few weeks, we've played certainly some really talented defensive lines that uh, you know stop the run well, Philly included. And uh, and we got to find kind of that formula. It'll be it's good for us to go through this process. That you know you're going to face really stout teams moving forward here. Certainly Washington is just like them. And uh, you know we're going we're to have to find our, find our way in the run game. What specifically about the Titans schematically? What, what about what they did disrupted what you guys? I think really sound fit fits. They, they fit the run game tremendous. Um, you know, there, there's not an error that occurs on their side. And you know, where you capture an edge or capture a gap that they're, they're misaligned or a guy doesn't fit it right, they are so extremely sound, I think. And, uh, and certainly, they had some movement up front that, uh, that that did some good things for them that that challenged us. Uh, John, show the athletic. In your short time around uh, T.Y. Hilton, what would you say would be the one thing that's impressed you the most? Um, just football feel. I mean, I think he's just tremendous as far as you know. You see the experience that he's played and. Uh, as he's kind of hopped right in there and jumped right into situations and roles, he can draw back on so much experience and, and he can easily uh, kind of figure out what we're trying to accomplish with a particular scheme. And, you know, certainly you saw that on some third downs this past game in, against Tennessee. He hopped in there and, you know, he just handled them really, really well. And even a couple of them had, had some decision making routes that he had to make a decision on. And him and Dak were. You know, they, they've been together for a couple of weeks and they're dialed. And so, uh, you know, he, he's great for that room as well. I think for guys like CD, Michael, uh, Noah, the rest of that whole group, to have a guy like him who's been around football for so long to, to be a resource for those guys as well, I think is tremendous. Calvin Watkins, Dallas Morning News. I don't know if there's a teaching point here or it was as simple as saying catch the ball, but you've had two picks off guys' hands. What do you <coughs> tell uh, Endershot and even Noah Brown would have one early in the year? Yeah, yeah, those are obviously unfortunate things, and uh, just because the opportunity has presented itself for for uh, for the receiver and the quarterback, and so those are certainly big missed opportunities. They're frustrating. Um, I don't know if there's a, a uh, you know <laughs> fundamental thing uh, other than obviously we're, we're hoping to catch the football in those situations, and uh, and obviously the ball bounces goofy ways, and uh, you know th those are really frustrating, unfortunate ones for everyone. Calvin Jordy of San Yahoo Sports. Uh, Y'all seem to have an, a pretty big run emphasis when Cooper was starting. Lately, y'all talked a lot about telling Dak to keep firing. How would you describe where your ideal run pass balance is now versus earlier in the season? Yeah, pretty balanced. I think, uh, you know, obviously, like, like Mike's probably hit with you guys a lot is, you know, he, he likes you know, 30 rush attempts plus. That's usually, you know, kind of a starting point for a game. And so, uh, you know, certainly we've been able to achieve those numbers. Uh, we've been able to get more play opportunities the last 
a uh, few weeks, and I think that kind of correlates to the third downs. And so when you're able to extend drives, you're able to get, you know, more plays and more opportunities there. But certainly the, the balance is what you want, uh, you know, over the course of a game. Now, as games take different paths, sometimes you got to throw a little more or run it a little bit more. And hopefully at the end of it, when you look at it, you, f you feel a sense of balance uh, as you look at, at the entire game there. So, um, you know, certainly that's still, still a number, number goal for us as we go through each and every week. With that 30 number, obviously, ideally, every play is super productive. But do you also keep in mind the benefit of just the run threat, even uh, to aid the passing game, even if you don't ultimately get the yardage? Yes. Yeah, I mean, certainly there's, you know, you, you can go on and on about the threat of run. I mean, you know, whether it's real or not. But <laughs> there's plenty of uh, analytics stuff we can get into, but I'm, I'm not going down that road. Uh, <laughs> Certainly for us, we, we value the running. We got two tremendous running backs for our specific situation. Uh, we want those guys to have opportunities to catch, catch the ball, run the ball, get those guys touches. And so uh, certainly the run game is the easiest formula to give those guys opportunities. I think that's really, really important for us. Certainly when you look at you know a big picture, you know when you do have the run game go on, can you get movement and play action off it? Certainly. Um, but I think it's really, really important for us about ball dis distribution, just giving our guys opportunities and touches. and. You know, when you have two running backs like us, uh, obviously it correlates to the run game as well. Dean, back to the very first game against Tampa, for whatever reason, the offense hasn't had much success on a reverse or end around type concepts. Mm -hmm. The Jets fits into a separate category than that. Can you put your finger as to as to why? And is it if something's not working? At some point, <laughs> you just stash it away and say, "All right, this isn't the year. That, that, that's not the way you think." Uh, I, I think you're always trying to find whether you can find another opportunity that may present itself because certainly, you know, we've had success at various times with, with regards to those type of plays. Um, you know, certainly seeing them week in and week out for whatever reason, ours just haven't, uh, haven't gone the way we, we had anticipated or hoped. Uh, certainly there are things that you still need to have in the package because you never, you never know. You, ne you may need those in, this, in a particular situation, but uh, certainly we've had a few of them, probably less than we've carried in previous years just because of the success rate hasn't been ultimately what we wanted. Uh, with back on TY for a second, mm -hmm. when you get here, is it OK, you give them a couple of years in this package, then you add a little bit more. You still find you can add more to this and it's not overwhelming to him? Or are you at a point where, OK, you don't want to overwhelm him with too much? Yeah, cer certainly you make sure he's he has a package that if he you know, that first game was at Jacksonville, and if, if he was available for us, I thought it was important to make sure he at least had a particular package, uh, probably in a reduced role that he can he could be available to us if we needed him. We ended up only going with uh, the five receivers that week, so he, he wasn't activated. And then each week, we just kind of kept kept adding, adding, and, uh, you know, really nothing's, nothing's deterred him. And so, uh, you know, he hops in there, and, I mean, he's handled two-minute situations in practice. I mean, he, he's done a tremendous job just from a volume standpoint of being able to handle so much of it. And and then, uh, you know, him and Dak just having a common language that if there is a little bit of what do I have, uh, being able to translate that uh, really really seamlessly for uh, for those two guys. Um, at the end of the season and, and last year, your name came up for a lot of jobs. How will you handle that this year if, if someone wants to take you away from here for a head coaching job? Yeah. Um, not too worried about it right now. Uh, something happens, something, you know, we'll go through that process if we have to. But uh, yeah, there's really nothing right now, so. What was that process for you last year, just to talk to other teams and that kind of thing? Yeah, certainly it's a really, really awesome process to go through as, as a coach. Uh, you learn a lot about yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. You learn about uh, things you feel good about, things that you want to improve on through the off season. And uh, those are things that always, you take the opportunity through the spring and summer to kind of see, uh, okay, maybe this is a blind spot for myself, or this is something that I need to grow in. And usually, you take those times to to prepare yourself uh, during those windows of the season, so that once you get to this time, I think it's important that you kind of keep that over there. And if you have to pick that stuff back up down the line, then certainly we will. But uh, you know, love it here, and no real uh, worries or concerns. Big block from your Cowboys Radio Network. Um, you converted a third and 30 two weeks ago, now third and 19. Um, wait for the third and 50 conversion. Yeah. Cowboys actually had one in Bill Parcells' first game. <laughs> they didn't convert it, but it was third and 50. Uh, Let's avoid that one. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that one. <laughs> Nothing on the play sheet. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah. Um, but you had people out and up, kind of a little double move. When, mm -hmm. when you called it, did you think, okay, they're not going to bite on this? Or, I mean, you got well, a corner to, to buy. Ultimately, it was a PI, 
obviously. Yeah, yeah, ultimately it was a PI. And I think, uh, you know, we've treated it two ways. There's obviously multiple ways to treat those long yardage situations. We've been a little bit more aggressive. And, and ultimately, if you do give your, your receiver a one-on-one -on -one opportunity downfield, I mean, that's ultimately what we're trying to design most plays for. And so uh, if you feel like there's an opportunity to present, present yourself on third and extra long, uh, you got Michael, you got TY, you got CD, Noah, whoever it may be downfield, uh, we feel pretty pretty comfortable with those. And so there's a little bit of a, you know, if it presents itself, awesome. If not, let's just be smart. And obviously, we got, you know, situations to play out beyond that. So uh, we've been fortunate. We don't want to live in this world uh, a whole lot. But we had one one each game. And, you know, we've been able to kind of flip it. So how, how have you seen the chemistry between Dak and CD develop? And what are the kind of the indicators in terms of how does, how, how does that manifest to you where you say, OK, they, they, they're on the right track? I think it's just the all the side conversations those guys have now, and so much time they spend together. And um, I think that's the coolest part when you just when you just kind of step back. You're at practice, you're in a game, you just kind of see their discussions and talking through things and how how on the same page they are. And uh, certainly you see it on the field with just how decisive Dak is when he goes to him. Um, you know they trust each other, they see it, they see the same picture. They they uh, CD does a tremendous job of getting out of breaks, and Dak lets it go and. Uh, it's pretty special. Those guys are on a on, in a really special place right now together. The way that CD separates or his catch point or uh, what what differences in his game are uh, you, you think been the difference in terms of his his production? I think his just ability to play off the line really well. Uh, you know, he does a great job at the line of scrimmage. Certainly, he has the all the talent and ability there, but he's just so quick, decisive, gets the DBs to move off their spots, and then after that, he really can dictate how the play is going to ultimately happen. And you know, there's a few third downs in our game. He, threw, he ran a little, uh, little seven route, which is a little, little bit of an outbreaker on a third and long. And he just did a tremendous job. There's corners outside leverage. He attacked them. He ended up getting the corner to run with them. And now he can cross face and, and win on an outbreaker versus outside leverage initially. And I think that's, that's the trust that those two are building, that uh, Dak knows that he's going to be able to take care of business from, uh, from the receiver standpoint and, and execute that. And CD trusts himself to. To, to run away from where ultimately his route's going to build that leverage opportunity to cross face and win. And so uh, those guys are awesome. Uh, comfort level with McGovern at center, and what are the options beyond him uh, for this week? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, Connor will, will hop into center. Obviously, it's something that he's been a part of that process throughout the year. And so it's not uh, anything foreign to him. Obviously, he takes snaps every day. He's, he usually takes some rotation at, at some point during practice just to keep keep himself available and alive in that situation. And so we're fortunate we, we have him. And you know, obviously, we got some other guys uh, behind him, some guys that are, that are injured that potentially can come back in, in Matt and uh, you know Lindstrom uh, on practice squad and a couple of our other practice squad guys who are certainly have played some center. And so we got some depth there and we'll just kind of let it, let it play itself out. Kellen, do you think there gets to a certain point where if y'all throw X number of interceptions, defenses start playing you differently, regardless of why those interceptions happened? And if so, how do you handle that? Certainly, I think, uh, you know, if interceptions are something, you're probably playing a little more vision defense, I would, I would suppose, uh, banking on, you know, whether it's tips, whether it's uh, you know vision on the quarterback, whatever it may be, uh, you know if that if that's something people choose to play, certainly that's uh, I can see the theory, you know, and I, I can justify it. But uh, you know we feel good about it. We obviously got to protect the football better. You know that's one of our that's really ultimately our number one objective right now, just to to play cleaner game there because we've done such a good job on the penalties and the pre snap and all the stuff that we want to improve on it as the season had progressed. We've kind of taken a nice growth there. And now ultimately the penalties or the uh, interceptions and the, the turnovers are going to be you know, the next big uh, indicator for us as, as we continue to progress. All righty. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you.